G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to tell you why I prefer to look like a dork with all the stuff hanging off my head than to run high transmitter powers on my FPV aircraft. Look at this. So here we are at the whiteboard. Everybody loves a whiteboard video. So this is a whiteboard video. What I'm looking at today is the effect that power, RF power has on range and whether we actually need a whole lot of RF power to get adequate range out of our FPV equipment. This also applies to our radio control link, but most of the time our radio control link is adequate. We don't need to worry too much about it. It is the video link that most people want you know, improvements in because you notice that. Right, uh, here's a model, if you didn't know, with my carefully designed 2D rendering, and here are your video glasses. And usually when you're flying FPV, there's some kind of distance involved between the two. And of course, the amount of power you use determines how much distance you can get. More power, more distance. You might think, well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? But one of the not so obvious things about the relationship between power and range is that it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. When we have a, uh, let me find my thing here. When we have a, an antenna, I'm gonna draw an antenna like this. Here we go. And radio waves travel out in all directions from our antenna on our model. We have what we call a near isotropic radiator. What's that? Well, it's not something you use in the winter to keep yourself warm. It just means that the transmitter antenna sends signal out in every direction, a complete sphere. Well, in theory, it's not quite a complete sphere, but it sends it out in all directions evenly. And why does that happen? Because we want that to happen. There's no point having a directional antenna on your model because you don't know which way the model is going to be pointing at any given time. It can pitch, it can roll, it can yaw. So if the antenna on the model wasn't pointing at you, you'd get very little signal. So it'd be useless. So we, we use an isotropic radiator, an omnidirectional antenna, so that it goes in all directions at once. And that means we don't have to worry about the attitude of the model. Right, so, but there's a problem with that. There's a problem with that. If we increase our power on our video transmitter, then some of the power going towards our goggles increases, but most of the power, the extra power, just disappears in the wrong direction. It vanishes into all the other directions it can go. So when we increase our power, we don't get the improvement in range you might expect. I'm gonna show you also how this works. I'm going to use balloons again, because balloons are great when you're looking at how antennas work. I did a video quite some time ago about directional antennas and how they get their gain, and I used balloons in that. There's a link to that in the description of this video if you haven't seen it already. I really recommend you go and look at it and it'll explain why I'm using balloons. Right, I've got a balloon here. And I'm old, so it's gonna be pretty hard. But I'm going to inflate this balloon with one breath of air. So that's the equivalent of one unit of power going into our isotropic antenna. Here we go, stand back. Here we go, there's one breath's worth of power in our, oop, tie this off without hurting myself. One, one unit of power in our balloon, and because it's an isotropic radiator, we have, a, Think of it as a sphere, right? So that's how much range we get. Imagine you're in the middle of that sphere, you get that much range from one unit of power. Simple, isn't it, right? There we go, I'll put that aside for a moment because I'm gonna get another balloon now and I'm gonna put two breaths worth of air. I'm gonna double the power in our sphere of radiation, right? So here we go. Right, let's tie that one off. There are two full breaths of air which for me, I'm about to hyperventilate and fall over it. I may edit that bit out. Right, so, is that twice as big as the other balloon? Let's have a look. Where's the other balloon? No, it's, it's nowhere near twice as big. You can see if I put them like this, the increase is actually marginal. In fact, it's about 40% bigger. It's 40%, if we were to measure from the center of this balloon or center of the big balloon to the edge, the radius of that sphere, it's about 40% more than the radius of that sphere. So why isn't it twice as big? Why doesn't this, I'll put two breaths in this one, one breath in there, twice as much power, doesn't give us twice the range, obviously. It gives us about 40% more range. That's because of something called the inverse square law. It's the ratio of the, the power that shows you that basically more power disappears into space than goes towards your goggles. So increasing your power is not necessarily the best way to get more range because other things happen. Remember, you're not the only people, we're not the only people using this band. So we're using 5.8, there are other, systems that use 5.8 gigahertz. Now we've got our antenna on a plane or a quad, high in the sky, the signal we broadcast can go an awfully long way. So if you start using high power levels, then you run into the problem that you start interfering with other systems, other services. That's not good, because when that happens, people complain and we get in trouble. As a hobby, we get in trouble. In the 
USA, the FCC is already clamping down on companies that are selling non-compliant FPV equipment on the wrong frequencies or the wrong power levels. They are planning to find Hobby King a huge amount of money because they've been selling gear that doesn't comply. And they've also issued a notice saying that they're going to be chasing the people who use these things. So watch out. Fly under the radar. And to fly under the radar, we need the minimum amount of power to achieve the job. So how can we get around this? Now, every time we double our power, I'm going to do some stuff here. Um, two times the power equals three decibels of, it's, it's, it's a logarithmic measure, so twice the power is three dB extra. So every time you add three dB, you are increasing the power by a factor of two. So if we want to go to four times the power, any clues? Four times the power? Now, four times the power would be Hmm, would it be six decibels? I think it might be. There we go. Um, and why am I using decibels? Because antenna gain is measured in decibels. Now, we're, we've been talking about omnidirectional antennas at the stage. They send stuff in all the same direct, all the directions at the same time. But we can have antennas that have gain. Gain? Go and look at the video I've linked to in the description talking about gain, what that means. So, if we want to go further, we can increase the power, but we're wasting so much. For every time we double the power, we only get 40% more range. That's not very good. But if we use the directional antennas, we can get the benefits or the, the equivalent of more power without using more power and a whole lot of other benefits to boot. So let me just clear the whiteboard for a moment. Right now I've drawn a couple of setups here. Here's a plane with 200 milliwatts video transmitter. It's supposed to be milliwatts. You can't read my writing because I'm crap. 200 milliwatt video transmitter. And over here we've got a set of goggles with a halicolon that has 10 decibels of gain. 10 decibels of gain. Now, we'll get a distance D out of that, right? But up here, if we didn't have that helica, if we use just an ordinary omnidirectional antenna, isotropic, no gain antenna, right? How much power would we have to use to get the same range? Well, I'm gonna tell you, have a guess, put your, think, put your think caps on, see if you can guess how much power we'd need to match the range that this setup's gonna give just by using a zero decibel, let's put zero, because this is relative to, um, relative to one milliwatt. Um, I forget the exact, yeah, but relative, it's a relative figure. So this is zero, which represents no gain, and this is 10, which represents 10, ti 10 times the gain, right? 10 times, 10 decibels. So if you look at that, um, imagine how much power you'd need here to match the range. Well, I'm going to tell you how much power, and it's going to shock you, it's going to surprise you. So sit down, um, belt yourself to your chair, have a cup of tea, relax, because you would need two watts. Two watts of power to get the equivalent, the same distance as 200 milliwatts here with a 10 decibel antenna on your goggles. How's that? Well, how can that be? Because the directional antenna on your goggles effectively amplifies, magnifies the signal by 10 times. It's, it's, if you go and look at my video on directional antennas, you'll see how that works. But this gain here is the same as increasing the power on your transmitter, so long as the antenna is pointed at your model. So if you wanted to go as far with a omnidirectional as you do with a directional with 10 decibels, you'd have to put two watts in your model. Actually, it's not quite that much because the antennas we use, like a cloverleaf or one of those rubber duck antennas, they do have a little bit of gain. So they're typically 2 dB. So in fact, we'd actually have about two decibels of gain here over an isotropic. So the difference is eight decibels. So you'd only probably need, I don't know, I'm just gonna guesstimate here, you'd probably only need like 1.5 watts. 1.5 watts to go that far. But it's a lot of power. 1.5 watts versus 0.2 of a watt. It shows you how much difference a directional antenna can make compared to power. And why would we go for antenna gain rather than power on the model? Why would we use a 10 decibel antenna and a 200 milliwatt video transmitter rather than a 1.5 watt transmitter and a 2 decibel antenna, omnidirectional? Well, it's simple because there are many benefits to be had from the setup. There are downsides. First downside, you've got to have this antenna pointed at the model or you're not going to get as far as you would in this setup. But that's not so difficult because antennas, although they are directional, they're not, it's not a, like a laser beam. They do have a field, a width. And the further away your model goes, let's draw a little picture here. Oh, here are you. Here's you. Ooh, that's you. With your little hands and your little feet standing over there. And you fly away. Now, let's just assume that your antenna is pointed this way. I'm using a helical. You wouldn't know, would you? Okay, your antenna's pointed this way. Because there is a, a sort of a beam that, that di diverges, and this angle here is something that um, will be 
you, if you check on the, the information for your antenna, it'll tell you what the angle of your um, gain antenna's beam is, okay? Now you might think, well, I'll have to keep really close, but as you get further away, the distance you can fly between the edges of the beam increases. So when you're really close, it's only that far, but as you get further away, it gets, so if you're flying a long distance, the angle of the beam is not that important, so long as you don't deviate miles off your planned course, because the beam widens as you go. It's pretty simple, isn't it? So um, this directionality is not that much of an issue. Now I fly a setup with a, uh, a helical, a five-turn helical, and an omnidirection with diversity on my goggles. And when I see the picture getting a bit grainy, I just turn my head and it'll improve or get worse. So it's easy enough just to zoom in with my head, my head dragging head, to zoom in on the model. And I've done that to go long distances, almost to the limits of visual line of sight. And it works really well once you get used to it, once you realize you know, where your model is. And it's good because it gives you more awareness of where you're flying. I mean, I've seen a lot of people fly FPV. They don't know which side of them the model is because they are not having to think about where they stand in relation to the model. This way, it gives you that awareness. You train yourself to do it, it works really well. And if you use a, even if you were to use a much lower gain antenna, let's say you were gonna use a, a five decibel antenna. A five decibel antenna. Now that will have a much wider beam because it's lower gain. So you've got, you don't have to be heavy head exactly on target or nearly as much on target. And five decibel, if you take away the two, that's three decibels different, so you're still, effectively running the same, you get the same range as if you're running 400 milliwatts. Right? When you're only running 200 milliwatts, because you've got three decibels of extra gain here, and that's equivalent to doubling the power. So yeah, it's kind of it's cool. It's a really cool thing. But what I did to sort of show you how this works is, I did a little test. I took a mini quad, a Cicada 180, which I chose that because it has a transmitter, a video transmitter that's easily changed in power. And I did a flight at 200, I did a flight at 20 milliwatts with an omnidirectional antenna on my DVR. And I did another flight at 200 milliwatts with an omnidirectional antenna on my DVR. And then I did another flight with 20 milliwatts and a helical antenna, the circular wireless helical antenna, which I think is about 10 decibels in gain. So we're gonna compare those flights now. I'm gonna try and put them side by side so you can see. I tried to fly exactly the same course at about the same speed and the same altitude. So we can compare how those performance, how the performance of the FPV link works using those alternative powers and antennas. Let's take a look at it. Right, now you can see the three video feeds labeled there. And uh, look particularly at the one where I'm using the high gain antenna and the low power level. And notice how clear that this is. There's no, very little in the way of multi-pathing, there's not much reflection. Uh, it's, it's a clean signal, uh, but the, the high power, the, the 200 milliwatts with an omnidirectional, there was quite a bit of flickering early on that flight because we were running through the Fresnel zone and getting a lot of reflections. One of the benefits of a directional antenna is that it will reduce the amount of reflection off nearby objects, and you can sometimes get a much, much cleaner feed. High power levels mean lots of reflections, and even when you're flying close, it can produce a lot of glitches. So you're seeing the benefits of that. Now we're right at the other end of the field here, and look, it's, it's that, that um, flight with the gain antenna, a bit of grain there, but compared to the standard omnidirectional, it's obviously miles better. And even compared to the 200 milliwatt transmitter, this 20 milliwatt link with a high gain antenna is just doing the job so much better. It really shows that antenna wins out over transmitter power any time. And now we're coming back into that zone. There's a little bit of uh, multipathing on the on the gain antenna, but the others were really bad. That's it. Look, I mean, that was just amazing, wasn't it? Right, so there you go. There's the proof, there's the living proof that sometimes, in fact most of the time, having a high gain antenna is better than running more power. As you saw in the video, when we ran high power levels with omnidirectional antennas, we got a lot of multipathing. Now the setup for that rig was, I had a, uh, a pagoda antenna on the DVR for the omnidirectional, so it's really good at rejecting multipathing signals, but still there was a lot of multipathing on the 200 milliwatt setup, a lot of reflections. Um, and when I did the uh, directional antenna, that was the circular wireless antenna that obviously was, a, because of its directionality, it was able to reject a lot of the reflections that might have come off the hangers alongside the runway and so forth. Just made for a much better experience, much better FPV experience. The other bonuses are that um, we're not gonna be interfering with people. We're only running 20, I was only running 20 milliwatts and you can see the distance that we covered there and it was a perfectly solid signal. So that's why when I go flying, you find I look like a dork because I've got a helical poked in at one side and I've got an omni at the other side, but it just works so well. And why don't I use a patch instead of a helical? 
Well, because you can't, there's a lot of faux patches on the market. They say circularly polarized patch, and they're not circularly polarized. And if you want the benefits of circular polarization, you've got to get a circularly polarized patch. And also, I like the fact that helical's easy to make, super easy to make. I'm going to do a helical project, so you can basically make a helical of any gain that you want, well, limits of physics notwithstanding. So you can design a helical yourself to the amount of beam you want. If you just want extra, um, signal integrity when you're flying relatively close but you may be going behind trees and things you want a fairly wide beam so you don't have to swivel your head much but if you want to go long distances you want a high gain helical so you can set it up in advance fly a beam and you can go a hell of a long way on relatively low power levels remember if you build yourself a 10 decibel or 12 decibel helical it's the same as running 10 times as much power in your video transmitter with an omnidirectional on the receiver that's staggering and of course we all know that 200 milliwatt transmitters are a lot cheaper than 1 watt transmitters or 2 watt transmitters. So there you go. And you won't be upsetting the FCC if you live in America or other uh, authorities elsewhere in the world. That's pretty much it. I hope you've learned something here. And I will do a practical, we'll do a build. We'll do a build helical setup. If you've got video glasses with diversity, let's build a couple of antennas that hopefully will give you the best results uh, for whatever environment you're flying in. Now, if you've got comments, questions, put them in the usual place. Always keen to get feedback from people who watch the videos. And if you've got other suggestions for videos, uh, let me know and I'll do my best to um, accommodate you. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Safety first. This could injure your eyes. Always wear eye protection when doing this sort of thing. That didn't work out.